Britain, the steepest spending cut since World War II to the tune of $130 billion. And in France, violent reactions to French lawmakers plan to raise the retirement age by just two years to 62 years old. And here in America, well, 136 Democrats fighting that kind of reform, sending the following message to President Obama, quote, we oppose any cuts to Social Security benefits, including raising the retirement age. We also oppose any effort to privatize Social Security in whole or in part. So who's got it right, Europe or us? Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus with Steve Forbes, Lizzie McDonald, Quentin Hardy, Stefan Fitch, Victoria Barrett, and Mark Tadji. I needed two breaths for that crowd. Steve, first to you. Who's got it right? Uh, in this case, the British have it more right than we do, even though we've raised our retirement age to 66 and a few years to 67, David. Uh, the Brits do allow some sort of private option. We need to go that way, especially for younger people. That way you can preserve the system and turn an a, a liability into an asset, have those monies, tax monies, go into people's accounts, personal accounts, with proper rules and diversification. We have to go that way or we're going to crash. Stefan, do we have it right or do they have it right? We've got it right this time. I'm not saying Steve's got bad ideas, but I'll tell you what, this British plan is going to give them a very nasty little recession in a couple of years. They're taking on too much. They're doing it too quickly. Our efforts to fix our problems should not begin with Social Security, which really is not in an immediate crisis. We can do some reforms. Let's offer options, but I don't think we should begin there. If you want to import ideas from Britain, give us better tea and more <laughs> rancorous debates on the floor of Congress. Well, Victoria, sometimes we can take, uh, take some ideas. After all, Maggie Thatcher came into office before Ronald Reagan did, and we learned some things from her. Right. And, I mean, to Stefan's point that Social Security is not in crisis, I think that's debatable. I mean, you look at estimates for, from the, the government, U.S. government saying that, you know, within the next 15 years, Social Security and Medicare, plus the interest payments to service debt on those programs, will absorb all of federal revenue. I mean, we are in trouble, and we need to address it now before we get to that point. This is a crisis. And Mark Taggi, certainly Medicare is in trouble, no? Medicare is in trouble, but to be thinking about cutting government spending at a time when the private sector is not spending, even though it has a trillion dollars in cash on its balance sheets, is sheer lunacy, David. I mean, come on. I mean, we have the largest segment of the population now getting ready to retire, and 77 million Americans, and now we're going to say, oh, let's postpone your retirement benefits. Let's cut your benefits. Let's cut that. Let's postpone this. What's that going to do to the economy when people stop spending? Because they're in retirement and they have no money. Quentin, sheer lunacy? Is that, is that what we're, uh, the U.K. is on the path of? I don't know about the, well, I know a little bit about the U.K. I was there last week. What America's on the path of is total magical thinking. Mm. And I have no idea why you singled out the Democrats in your opening. Show me a Tea Party Democrats, person. Republicans, Show me a Republican. everybody's to blame, Quentin. I'll exactly. go with you on that one. Exactly. With that, you know, in England, people making over $70,000 don't get a payment on their child now. They are doubling school fees. They are cutting defense. They are cutting 500,000 government workers. Specific targeted things hitting all ideological sides i'm all for right. it we can't get close to that well emac the reason why we focused on democrats is because everybody who wrote that letter that i quoted earlier were democrats that's the specific reason for that letter go ahead EMAC. yeah and that's an important point but it is uh, the deficit is a bipartisan creation what i love about this story is that you know the democrats and other people in congress are saying to the europe that you need to spend more which is like somebody with osteoporosis advising somebody with arthritis you know to take on a huge anvil of spending on their back this deficit is about the size of india the spending that we're seeing coming in the door for fiscal 2011 but back to the point of what to do with social security yes privatize it president clinton wanted that Daniel Patrick Moynihan advocated for it, as Steve Forbes has already pointed out, and that got sidetracked. So just two percentage points into an index fund or into a corporate bond fund, it would be safe. We're not talking about the whole thing, just people taking control of and their Steve, own money. Emac, the last point I think is the strongest one. A lot of people claim, oh, the, the Republicans want to destroy Social Security. In fact, they just want to provide an option, a choice, right? 
Yes, and a very mild choice. I think uh, people should be allowed to put 6 or 8% of their it's payroll tax true. out of the 12 and a half into a personalized account. It would be much better for them and for the future. By the way, David, Galveston, Texas, county workers there, three counties, pulled out of Social Security in the early 1980s, put it in fixed income instruments, no risk at all. Those folks are retiring today with benefits 50%, 200% higher than those who stayed with Social Security. Privatizing, personalizing is the way to go for people, but not only to get more investment capital, but to have higher benefits in the future. Taji, what do you have against giving individuals it, more choice to decide whether they want to opt out of the current system? Because it will not be a higher choice. It'll be a big honeypot for, for Wall Street. They'll feed people to death, and they're going to put them into high-risk investments. But if I, mean, I that's want what, to that's put my Social Security about. account there, or don't, about. shouldn't I? Wall Street Hold on, Mark. To get control Mark. of your retirement Mark, money. If I want to put my Social Security account in a private fund, shouldn't I have the right to do that? You should have the option to do but that I don't. by setting up a, a separate fund. But We're I don't have, have a situation David. that it's going to remove the government from it. Go ahead, Quentin. Good. That's not a good thing. Go ahead, Quentin. I mean, what have employers okay, done? Mark, go ahead, Quentin. Case. They've cut them. David, your desire to say nice things about the Republicans has taken us away from the main point, cutting the deficit. In their platform, all they did was talk about waste, fraud, and abuse. Yes. We have to get specific, and we have to share it out. Absolutely, but do, you don't have a problem with providing that option for people who want out of the current system, do you, Quentin? Well, if people want out of it, you can have out of it, but you sure have to have a graduated way to do that because right now the young pay for the old, and rejiggering that will be the well, work of a decade. It would also, it would also take Congress off the, the addiction of taking leave. our Social Security funds and spending it on whatever project they want, which has been going on since the 60s, which the Democrats launched under yeah, the unified bu budget under LBJ. Yeah, David, uh, this is one of the great scams of all times. In effect, uh, the government's taking in $2 of taxes and only paying out $1 benefits in Social Security. When they take in Let's Social Security tax, deficit. wait, when they take in Social Security taxes today, when they, uh, they have a surplus now, they spend that right. money, get an IOU from the Treasury. When they turn in that IOU, Treasury's got to go out it's, in the market and raise it, it again. It is a scam. Right. It's supposed to be a lockbox. It's never been a lockbox. They open it up all the time, grab the cash, $2 use it for regular taxes spending. $1 Put of benefits. Use it's the IOU. Use it but Victoria, what about the transition? If you want to allow people to opt out. As Quentin mentioned, you're going to need a transit. You're going to have to design that very carefully, no? Yeah, you need to give people a voluntary opt out. But I just want to point out, if, if we admire what the UK is doing here, we need to ask a very fundamental question, which is, is everyone entitled to Social Security? Should it be a program Means testing. that if, it, yes. yes. Do we need to go, because that's what they're doing in the U.K. with child benefits now, to save money. And that's, that's a tough question. It raises it a lot a of issues, question. but it's worth asking. Go ahead, asking. Stefan. D David, I'll tell you what a scam is. This discussion is silly because I'll tell you what, fixing silly? Social Security, even if we take all of your best ideas, is not going to give us the kind of booming economy that we really need. The idea that Brit Britain's t uh, cuts uh, to entitlement programs is going to give them this magical boom if you is absolute the baby nonsense. Boomers in we should be focused on getting the boom going. One at a time. And then if you protect, if you, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Emac. No, if you do not do this reform, you will have baby boomers and poor and senior citizens increasingly poor. And if you want to protect and the economy, you taxes. protect the retirees and give them their money back that they had paid into the system or make the all choice right. to invest it the way they want. And that matter. argument is not silly at all. Stick around for this big labor busing members to the polls to vote early.